Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. Wrapping gifts can be a lot of fun, sometimes. <laughs> but sometimes a gift bag is the best option, isn't it? So what to do if you still want the presentation to be super special? You make your own gift bag. It's really not as hard as it looks, especially with my free design and a cutting machine. Plus my versions have these really cool and adorable decorative picks to keep the tops closed. So there is no peeking in these gift bags. How cute are these gift bags, right? So Greg saw a gift bag similar to these in a store and he brought it home and he showed me and I love them too. And I knew you'd all want to learn how to make your own. So I modified a design that we used already to make a gift bag with an open top. Now there's this nice piece that folds over and a pick to hold it shut. I made three different designs, one with a love theme, another for Christmas, and a birthday cake design. I'll show you how to prepare, cut, and assemble the birthday cake design today, but you can use most of the same steps to make the other designs. To make these gift bags, I used a variety of cardstocks for each one, like plain white for the folding top, 12 by 12 inch patterns for the bag, and glitters and foils for the decorations. They all cut well on a green standard grip machine mat in my Cricut Maker 3. You can also use an original Cricut Maker, any Cricut Explorer series machine, a big Cricut Venture, or another cutting machine that uses SVGs. I would be cautious about sizing these down to fit on a Cricut Joy or Joy Extra, however, as some parts can get really hard to fold correctly if they're too small. And if you picked a patterned paper for the bag, stick to an all over design because you don't want the words or images to be upside down. And I did use heavy 100 pound white cardstock for the pick rectangles and to cut a reinforcement for the bottom of the gift bag. You only need this heavier paper for one mat and I'll show you which one when we get to cutting so don't worry about that. The other materials and tools are simple. I used a ruler and scraper to help with creases and a good quality craft glue to hold everything together. Foam adhesive squares are good for some of the decoration layers too. And speaking of the creases, you can use dash cut lines like I will today in this video, or you can make the score tool file using a scoring tool. If you want to make a bag out of glitter cardstock, the score line version will be really hard to see, so I recommend you stick to the dash cut line version of the gift bag. And normal craft glue can have trouble with the glitter texture, so hot glue will work better with glitter. Now each design also has a cute hang tag where you can have your machine write a message. I used a Cricut fine point pen in matching colors and then some twine to secure them to the bag. So are you ready to make your own? Awesome. First, I'll teach you how to put the basic bag together and then we'll go over how to add the fold over top and secure it with a cute little pick. Step one, get my free gift bag designs. First, download my designs at jennifermaker.com slash 559. You can either download right from that link by saving the project or download for my entire free design collection. To find it, look for libraries in the red bar at the top, then click either get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. Search the page for design number 559 and click the link to download the designs. The design folder includes a score version that you can cut using a scoring tool, as well as a no score version with dash cut lines that only needs the fine point blade. If you'd like to make the version with score lines using a scoring wheel or a scoring stylus, please see my tutorial on Cricut scoring to learn how to adjust the files over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut scoring tools tips. If you're not sure how to upload files, go to jennifermaker.com slash svgs to learn how to unzip and upload SVG files. Now you can cut the pieces by hand using my PDF template that's inside the zip file, but it's way easier to use a cutting machine like a Cricut. I'm using a Cricut Maker 3 in this video, but you can also use an original Cricut Maker, any Explore series machines, a Cricut Venture, or another cutting machine that accepts SVG cut files. 
I'll show you how to prepare and make the bag and the birthday pick design using patterned foil and plain cardstock. And I'll share tips at the end of this video if you want to use glitter cardstock or you want to make the heart or the Christmas tree designs. Step two, prepare and cut your gift bag design. In Cricut Design Space on a blank canvas, click Upload and then Upload Image. Click Browse and then select the SVG file with no score in the name. On the Prepare to Upload screen, it will say Cut Image with a Design Preview. Click Upload. Find your design in Recent Uploads and add it to the canvas. Click the minus sign to zoom out so you can see the entire design. The two large white shapes make one bag. Now in the layers panel over on the right, you can see that they're grouped with black pieces for the bottom reinforcement in three rectangles. We'll layer the rectangles to make sturdy picks later on. I've made the reinforcement and pick pieces a different color, so we remember to cut them from heavy white cardstock. Then there are grouped layers to make three different pick designs for the foldable top piece. Now it's a little hard to tell since everything is flat, but this will make a bag that is 8 by 7 by 4 inches with a 5 to 6 inch tall pick. Now I don't recommend resizing any parts of this design because the gift bags just won't go together as perfectly if you do. Now it is easiest to make one version at a time, so I recommend you select the entire design and then click the ungroup icon. Then click and delete the two designs at the top that you don't want to make. The hanging tag includes a written note and you'll find it in the layers panel, so select it. Right now the machine would just cut the words instead of drawing them and we don't want that. So to fix that, you'll want to select the topper design on the canvas and click ungroup. Then select just the text layer in the layers panel. In the top menu, click Operation, then select Pen. If you have a certain pen or color in mind like I do, click the color box. Set the style using the drop-down menu. There are many types to try, but this small writing works best with a thin pen, so I'll stick with the fine point 0.4 millimeter pen. Below the drop-down, you can scroll to see all the colors that are available in that style and size. There are so many, but I'll use the turquoise pen option to match the cardstock I'm using. Then click back on the canvas to close that menu. Hold your shift key and select both the rectangle and text in the layers panel, then click attach to keep them together. Your layers are now ready to cut. Check that the correct machine is selected and then click make. On the prepare screen, set the material size for each mat to match the paper you're using. Now the main bag pieces will each be on their own mat because they're so big. I'm going to use some 12 by 12 inch pattern cardstock for them, so the material size stays the same. Your mats might look different, but my next mat is the one with the bag's folding top and the tag. I have a 12 by 12 inch 65 pound cardstock to use for this, so the mat for the folding top and the hang tag can stay the same. My next mat is part of the cake that I'll cut out of off-white 12 by 12 inch cardstock. And now while mat 5 is black, I want to cut the reinforcement and the pick layers on 8.5 by 11 inch 110 pound white cardstock. So I'll change the material size. Just remember to grab the heavy white paper for this mat, not black like the screen shows. Now keep going through the mats, making sure you have the cardstock you want ready. Select the first mat again and then click continue. On the make screen, set the first mat to match your bag's main material. Not all machines cut the exact same way, but I got the best results with the settings listed for each bag cardstock. So for plain or pattern 65 pound cardstock, I use medium cardstock 80 pound with more pressure. For the glitter cardstock, I use glitter cardstock with more pressure. Now place your first mat's material with the exterior you want face up on a green standard grip machine mat. 
Use a brayer to adhere it well, especially if you're using the no score version like me, because there are lots of tiny cuts to make. Check that your fine point blade is clean and in the clamp, and then load the prepared mat into your machine. Press the flashing button to begin cutting. This might take a little bit if you're cutting the dashed cut line version, but it will be worth the wait. When it's finished cutting, keep the mat loaded and gently lift a corner to make sure the cuts went all the way through the cardstock. If not, press the go button again to make another cut in the same design. When the cut is complete, unload your mat, and then flip your mat over onto your work surface and gently roll the mat back to release the cardstock without curling or ripping. A spatula can help you with the delicate areas. Then place the piece to the side face up in the correct orientation. Now mat 3 has the foldable top and tag with the writing, so set the material to medium cardstock 80 pound with more pressure. The steps may differ for your machine, so just follow your on-screen props. Now place your 12 by 12 inch 65 pound off-white cardstock on a green standard grip machine mat and use a brayer to adhere it really well. And then uncap your fine point 0.4 millimeter pen and scribble on some scrap paper to make sure it's flowing. You always want to do this before you put it into your Cricut. If it works, Put the cap back on your pen so you don't lose it. Then load your mat and follow the prompts to put the pen in the clamp when needed and complete the cuts. Follow the same steps to prepare, cut, and remove your remaining mats using these settings depending on your choices. For plain or patterned 65 pound cardstock, use medium cardstock 80 pound with more pressure. For glitter cardstock, use glitter cardstock with more pressure. For foil cardstock, use holographic cardstock with more pressure. And for heavyweight cardstock on the black mat with the reinforcement and pick layers, use heavy cardstock 100 pound with more pressure. And be sure to clean your blade after you cut a mat with glitter cardstock. Those shiny little bits can stick to your blade and cause trouble on your next mat. Make sure you have all the correct pieces and they're face up, referring to your canvas in Cricut Design Space if you need help. Step 3. Assemble your gift bag with pick. We'll put the main bag together first, so grab the two large pieces. Place them face up with the diagonal lines at the bottom. There's a horizontal crease near the top of each piece. Fold the top edges toward the back along the creases. You shouldn't see the back of the papers. Fold the right side tabs under the same way on both pieces. Flip both bag pieces over so the same folded tab is still at the top. Now add a thin glue line to one of the pieces side tabs showing the paper's front. Adhere the tab to the unfolded side edge of the opposite piece. Let the glue dry and then add glue to the other side tab on the front pattern. Adhere the tab to the inside edge of the unattached side to make a closed shape. Lay the bag flat with the pick slots at the top. The top layer has a vertical crease just in from the right edge of the bag. Pinch the vertical crease up and fold all along it. Flip your bag over and repeat on the other side. The bag will naturally want to fold along this line and pop up into a 3D rectangle. Flatten the bag so that there are symmetrical vertical creases on the left and right. Place your ruler just above the horizontal line closest to the top of the bag and then fold the bottom layers up. Then remove the ruler and run your scraper along the fold to create a nice sharp crease. Then unfold that crease. Now for the bottom, here's an important tip. Go slowly and be patient when folding this part. You may need to gently crease the edges of your cardstock along the diagonal lines to encourage it to fold as needed. Push the two sides of the bottom section in toward each other along the diagonal fold lines. Flatten those sides against your work surface to create two triangles on either side. They should match the bag's outside. 
Make sure the triangle's corners are sharp and then crease them with the scraper. Fold the top section down along the topmost horizontal line so the open end overlaps the center just a bit. Fold the bottom section up along the bottom horizontal line so it overlaps the top section's open end. Unfold these two flaps, then add glue to the four outer triangles. Be careful not to get any glue on the center portion underneath the flaps. That's the inside and you don't want to glue the bottom to the inside. Fold the top section down to secure those triangles. Then add a thin line of glue to the folded top piece where the bottom flap will overlap it. Fold up the lower flap and hold it to dry. Then use a ruler to fold the left side inward along the vertical line. The angled pieces at the lower section should just barely meet and the bottom corners should be nice and sharp. Then repeat the process on the other side using the other vertical crease. Once it's folded correctly, use a scraper to really secure the creases in place. Unfold the lines we just creased and it's almost like a store pot bag now. Put one hand inside the bag from the top and carefully push down on the bottom to open it. You might need to press a few spots to help it open completely. Go slowly and keep trying until your bottom is flat enough to be set down on your work surface. Smooth out the four outer creases by supporting them from the inside and pinching them lightly from the outside, especially near the bottom. Then gently support the side creases on the inside and poke them in from the exterior to smooth them out. Folding the creases this way will help the bag open more smoothly. The bottom and sides should be nice and square and stand up on its own. Now for the folding top section. Place the folding section face up. Secure each star on the shaped edge with a bit of glue. Once the glue dries, fold the horizontal crease toward the back of the paper. Add a thin line of glue to the top's tab and press it against the inside of the bag's back, the side without the slits. Insert the bag reinforcement inside to make the bottom sturdier. Attach the details and pick. Gather your remaining pieces for the pick. Line up the three matching pick pieces and glue them together in a stack. The pick will be sturdier this way. Align the birthday cake layers face up so the correct pieces show. Leave the small top layer face up by itself for now. Looking back at Cricut Design Space can help here. Flip the cake stacks face down and then lift the gold layer and place it face up like opening a book. Add glue to the back of the next layer, then line it up and press it in place on the previous layer. Add the other layers in order the same way. Top them off with a small icing layer. Once the decoration is dry, apply glue to the top inch of the pick on one side and press the cake and pick together. I found it easiest to put the gift in the bag before closing everything up. It's the perfect size for an ornament or a light set of coasters. Just keep the gift under six pounds to avoid damaging the bag. When you're ready to add the pick, put your hand inside the bag to gently press the cardstock between the slits out a bit. It will be easier to position the stick if it isn't flat. Fold over the bag top so the slots line up and insert the pick's plain end into the top one until you can see the tip through the lower hole in both layers. If the pick doesn't easily slide out the bottom slots, you can poke your weeding tool in to help angle the bottom of the pick out. Go slow and be patient. You don't want to tear anything at this point. When the pick is through both slots, push it down a bit so the closure is secure. To attach the little hang tag, cut a piece of twine about 6 inches long. Insert the twine through the tag's hole and then wrap it around the pick under the cake decoration. Adjust the tag to hang at the desired length and tie the twine behind the pick, and then cut off any excess twine. Your folded gift bag with the birthday pick is now complete. Variations Making the bag in different styles is the same. Just make sure to use the correct cut settings if you use glitter cardstock or another special paper for the exteriors. 
And if you use glitter cardstock or another option that has some texture, you might have better results gluing the bag together with hot glue. So let's talk about the heart pick. Here are the pick pieces for the heart design. I used adhesive foam to attach the dark red detail layer to the base heart shape. Then I glued the light detail shape on top. Christmas tree pick. Here are the pick pieces for the Christmas tree design. Align the tree layers face up with a trunk layer on the bottom, then the star followed by the red and the green on top. Place them face down and flip the base layer over, just like we did for the cake. This time, add adhesive foam pieces between the layers to create more depth. Be sure the ornament holes line up before you press the top layer in place. I used adhesive foam to attach the tree layers together. The brown piece with the trunk goes on the bottom with the gold piece next, then the red piece, and then the green layer on top. Step four, show it off. Here are my three finished gift bags with their decorative picks. Aren't these really cool? And there you go. Now you can make your own gift bags that no one can peek inside, at least not without getting caught. <laughs> and you can mix and match the papers and colors to match the holiday or the recipient. So much more fun than a store-bought bag. If you want more projects to level up your gift wrapping, I have lots more fun ideas in my annual countdown to Christmas, The Merry Maker Mingle. Sign up free at merrymakermingle.com for free projects, tutorials, designs, and all of the details you need to craft a beautiful Christmas this year. Or to learn more about paper crafting and other crafts, come check out my Cricut Crafters and Makers Facebook group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And that's it for today. Until tomorrow, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.